you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Okay, so we're going to do a quick overview of uh, quadrilaterals, which is uh, four-sided shapes, in particular parallelograms, uh, rectangles, rhombus, uh, square, and trapezoids. Um, so we're going to do a quick run-through of all the theorems on your theorem sheet that are related to these figures, and then we'll go through a couple of examples of how to actually use these theorems. <laughs> so, first off, uh, properties of a parallelogram. Here I have a parallelogram depicted. There are several properties that you need to be aware of. Um, the opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. That is actually the definition of parallelogram. Uh, additionally, opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, and the diagonals bisect each other. So summing all that up, uh, I'll go through each one. Um, the first one, opposite sides are parallel. Um, the opposing sides are parallel, it's pretty self-explanatory. Opposite sides are congruent, so this side will be congruent to this side, this side congruent to this side. Um, opposite angles are congruent, so angles diagonally across from each other will be equal or equivalent. And the diags, which is the diagonals of a parallelogram, bisect each other, so that if I drew the diagonals of this parallelogram, they would cut each other into congruent parts, so this part would be congruent to this part, and this part to this part. Um, Besides from properties of parallelograms, you'd also be aware of how to prove parallelograms. Now, what's convenient is that all of these properties are also methods for proving that something's a parallelogram. Opposite sides being parallel is the definition. So that is, if you have two sets of opposite parallel sides, you'd be able to use the definition of parallelogram to conclude it's a parallelogram. If a quad has two sets of opposite congruent sides, um, one set of congruent parallel sides, if it has two sets of opposite congruent angles, or if the diagonals bisect each other. So each of those is a theorem related to proving something's a parallelogram. It's pretty much the converse of each of the properties um, applied to each one. Ways of proving a parallelogram is a rectangle. Now, the definition of rectangle is basically as follows. If I little draw a rectangle here. The definition of a rectangle is just that it has four right angles. Now, if you're actually doing this in a proof, that definition doesn't actually help us a whole lot for proving, and it takes a very long time. So that's not the most efficient use. Um, the, one of these two would be your better option. First, prove something is a parallelogram. So in both of these, you need to first prove it's a parallelogram using one of the five ways we just mentioned here. Using one of these five methods, prove it's a parallelogram. And then if you show that it contains one right angle, you can conclude that it's a rectangle. Or if you show that the diagonals are congruent, you can conclude that it's a rectangle. The definition of rhombus is actually that it has four congruent sides. So if I draw a rhombus, the definition states that all four sides are congruent to each other. Again, that definition, not very helpful when doing proofs. So the best option for proving something is a rhombus is to, again, first show it's a parallelogram and then show that two consecutive sides, that's two sides which are touching each other, like these two sides here, if you show those two sides are congruent, you can then conclude immediately that it is a rhombus. Some properties of these special quadrilaterals, rectangles, rhombi, or rhombuses, trapezoids, and isosceles trapezoids are as follows. By the definition of rectangle says it contains four right angles. Also, its diagonals are congruent to each other. So if you drew a rectangle and its diagonals, I'm going to highlight these diagonals so they stand out a little bit more. These diagonals here and here, those red diagonals would be congruent to each other. That's a conclusion you can make uh, from it being a rectangle for a rhombus, all four sides are congruent, the diagonals of the rhombus are perpendicular to each other, and the diagonals bisect the two corner angles. Now that statement by itself is a little bit confusing. So let's look at a rhombus and see what that's actually saying. Both of its diagonals, I'm going to draw one of them, what it does is it bisects or it cuts into two equal parts the corner angles of that rhombus. So what this statement three is saying is that this diagonal is cutting this corner angle and this corner angle 
into congruent parts. It's bisecting it or cutting it into two equal parts. So that's a conclusion you can make um, if you know shape is a rhombus. Now squares, I haven't really mentioned any properties of them, but a square is just a rectangle and a rhombus at the same time. So all the properties of rectangles, all the properties of rhombuses are also included in squares. A trapezoid is a shape that has exactly one set of parallel sides. Those parallel sides are called the bases. So here's a trapezoid. The one, exactly one set of parallel sides, or the bases, are these, this one, and this one. They are parallel to each other, so I'm going to use these arrows to represent parallel. Um, if it's an isosceles trapezoid, uh, the special property of an isosceles trapezoid is that um, not only are its bases parallel, but its legs also happen to be congruent to each other. So I can label its legs, which are the sides, the non-bases, are congruent. And by the isosceles trapezoid theorem, its base angles are also congruent. Now, I, uh, rhombus happens to have two sets of base angles. It has, since it has two bases, it has two sets of base angles. So the top ones are also congruent to each other. So not only are the bottoms, but also are the tops, as are the legs. So now let's use, see how some of these theorems can get used in a proof. Scrolling down, proofs. BAC is congruent to DAC, so let's label that in my diagram. Uh, again, colored pencils is helpful for making sense of diagrams. I'm going to start with the color red. So BAC is this angle, is congruent to DCA, DCA, which is this angle. AB is congruent to CD, so that's, let's do that in a different color. AB. This portion is congruent to DC. This portion. And I need to prove that this is a parallelogram. Well, let's start off like any other proof with our given information. So I know those given angles, BAC, is congruent to angle DCA. And, so I can say it in my same statements, this is also a given piece of information. AB is congruent to CD. That's given. Okay, so that's what I have labeled in my diagram. And these two angles here and here seem to be alternate interior angles of this transversal line. So they're on alternate sides and on the interior of these two lines. So I can conclude that AB must be parallel to CD. Because alternate interior angles being congruent implies that my lines are parallel. So now I'm going to see if I have enough information to conclude that this shape is a parallelogram. So if I scroll down here to go back to my parallelogram ways of proving, I can use the definition, which is two sets of parallel sides. But it seems like for my question that I have one set of congruent parallel sides. So that is actually enough to conclude immediately that it is a parallelogram. So that's what I'm going to say. Get my pen back out. A, B, C, D. Is A, and remember this symbol we can use to represent the word parallelogram. And the reason is a quad, quadrilateral, with one set. of congruent parallel sides. My set in this case is A, B, and C, D. They are congruent and parallel. Is a parallelogram. Okay, Which was basically what I needed to prove, so there's no more steps. That's it. That's all I had to do. Okay. The next proof, ABCD is a rhombus with AM congruent to CN and triangle MBN is isosceles. I want you to try this proof on your own. Um, if you do get stuck, I'm going to give you the statements now. I'd like you to try it without the statements first. If you get completely stuck, here are the statements for you. So you can fill in the reasons for those statements. If you're unable to determine what those reasons are, be sure to ask this question in class tomorrow and we will go over it. Right now, I'm going to roll down to some algebra type questions related to these uh, theorems. I'm going to get my pen back out. Uh, in parallelogram, HIJK, HL, which is this portion, 
is x plus 4, so I'm going to label that x plus 4. hj, this entire segment, hj, is 4x minus 4. We'll recall that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other, which means that this segment passes through the midpoint of this segment. Well, that means if this point L is the midpoint, by the midpoint theorem, this length should be half of this length. So I can set up my equation as x plus 4 equals 1 half of the total length of that segment, 4x minus 4. When I distribute that half, I end up with x plus 4 equals 2x minus 2. Okay. I'm going to bring my x to this side and my 2 to the other side, and it turns out that x equals 6. Scrolling down to the next question. In rhombus ABCD, angle 1 is 60 degrees. Find the measure of CDA. Well, if angle 1 is 60 degrees, CDA, which is this angle, I'm going to need to figure that out. That should be a 60. Well, recall that the diagonals of a rhombus bisect the corner angles. So if that's 60, then the entire angle, this entire angle, BCD, must be 120 degrees. So it's the measure of angle BCD is 120. And since a rhombus is a special parallelogram, these two lines must be parallel. So the same side interior angles are supplementary. So the measure of angle CDA would be the supplement of BCD, meaning they add up to 180. So it would have to be 60 degrees because 160 is combined with 120. I would get 180 degrees. Okay. Last question of this section. In rectangle ABCD, AB equals this, BC, CD, find the value for X. Well, uh, to make sense of this question, it's helped to draw the diagram. So let's draw a rectangle. Okay. Let's label it ABCD. Recall that when we're labeling quadrilaterals, it goes in a um, either clockwise or counterclockwise order. So A, B, C, D, that's one correct way to label this. You could also have gone the other way around, so A, B, C, D. But one incorrect way is to jump around uh, when we're labeling the diagrams. So that would be if I went A, B, then I jumped back to this side, C, and then D. This would be an incorrect way of labeling. It has to be consistent in either a clockwise or a counterclockwise order. So I'm going to switch these back so I get a valid order. So that's one correct way of labeling my diagram. And now I'm going to fill in uh, the given information to figure out how to answer this question. So AB is 10 plus X. That looks like 10 XX, but remember this is just a plus 10 plus x, bc is 12, and cd is 11x. Okay, well, it looks like this fact, 12, is completely useless to me, because I'm going to use the property of parallelograms, it's a rectangle, is a special parallelogram, that opposite sides are congruent, so it looks like that 12 is completely useless to me in figuring out what x is, but since ab has to equal cd, 10 plus x, will have to equal 11x, which means that when I subtract x from both sides, 10 equals 10x, or just that x is equal to 1. All righty then.